Hello and welcome to the first installment of Bye Buddy Read, which is something that I have started with Malin from Just Malins because we are both bisexuals that wanted to read more bi stuff. Every month we will be reading a book with a bisexual or otherwise queer character and we will be discussing it in videos and on Twitter and so we would highly encourage you to come join us if it's something that you're interested in doing and if you wait until the end of this video we will reveal I will reveal, she's unfortunately not here with me, she's in Sweden, uh, we'll reveal what we're reading next month. And please do note that even though it is the bi buddy read, that's mostly just because, again, me and Melon are bisexuals and alliteration, but we are looking at queer experiences more broadly, specifically in the middle of the spectrum. The book that we read for this month is Written on the Body by Jeanette Winterson. Not that this helps you. Just take my word for it. Written on the Body is essentially a reflection on behalf of the narrator of their life through looking at all of their past people that they were involved with romantically or lovers, but I hate that word, it's so cringy. This narrator has a particular attraction or seems to draw in married women and this never ends up going well, as one might expect. The story is told in a very stream of consciousness kind of way. There isn't any chapters, there's breaks done in different ways kind of towards the last half of the book. And I actually really liked it. It worked very, very well for this story because it is kind of the narrator just telling you their story of what's happened. It was written so well, beautiful crafting of language appreciated. There was a few qualities that I specifically appreciated in the narrator and one of those was humor and especially in their ability when they're looking back to be humorous about stuff and tell things in a humorous way I found delightful. Um, one of the other things that I really appreciated about how the narration worked in this book is how self-aware the narration was. Like there was instances in the book where the narrator would address the fact that they could be seen as being an unreliable narrator and how they were telling the story. Along with the self-awareness of the narrator, another thing I appreciated is that there's lots of space in the book for criticism. So you were never just seeing the narrator from their one dominant perspective. There's always characters around the narrator that would call them out on the shit they were doing and mistakes that they thought they were making. The only thing that I didn't fully get on with in the book is the narrator's fixation on a specific kind of romantic love. So as I've talked about previously, this is really a personal history told through instances of romantic entanglements, right? So it's obviously central on romantic relationships. But more than that, it's the specific kind of romantic relationships that this narrator is involved in and how they're attracted to people that I just could not connect with at all. The narrator is the kind of person who is drawn to that initial spark and intense affairs and just all-consuming, torturous love, you know what I mean? Like that kind of thing, which is not me at all. Mm-mm. No. I am a slow burner, you know? Like just, just be my friend. That's, that's, that's it. That's, I'm good there. Like I am not super into that kind of like, all-consuming, I feel like I'm on fire because the other person is touching my flesh. Like, that's, I don't want that. That sounds so fucking stressful. Like, I get anxious just thinking about it. But this is what the narrator is really drawn to, and it's something that other, that the narrator is aware of because it's something that when they're talking about the romantic troubles, their friends tell them. They're like, look, you keep saying that you don't want this, you don't want the torturous dramatic love, but like you're addicted to this. Like you, this is how, it's, this is what you truly love. Like this is what makes you come alive. It's now what makes me come alive. And so mm, last thing I want to talk about is gender and sexuality in the book. So we use this in Bye Buddy Reads because the narrator is bisexual, pansexual, somewhere in the middle because they have lovers, romantic affairs with multiple genders. However, you never know the gender of the narrator and this is done 
so purposefully and it messed me up way more than it should have. Something that I found myself doing in reading this book, because the gender of the narrator isn't divulged, is I spent a lot of my time trying to discern the gender of the narrator, which, why? Stop it. Why does it matter? Who the fuck cares? I do, apparently, and it's because of this being entrenched in the gender binary. At first, I was reading it, I really, ugh, I hesitate to say, like, neutral and then more woman, more man, because that's an incredibly deductive, unsophisticated way of understanding gender, and I know that. But the way that I was reading the book was more, at the beginning, I was kind of like, a f feminine woman-ish kind of sense that was happening. And I think part of that was just my own, like, my experience that I was bringing to the book as um, a cis woman thing. But it was interesting too because then throughout later in the book I found that it would fluctuate quite a bit where there would be certain situations where I was reading just reading the book and envisioning the narrator in the way I started with and then I would start thinking of them as a man. I was really thinking about if the things that the narrator was doing, if I was perceiving them in a male identifying light, would I find that action and what they were doing more problematic? Or would I have different feelings towards the narrator if I knew that their gender was like a cis man or something, right? As much self-reflexivity as the narrator is bringing to their story and how they're telling it to you, I also think this is a book that is an experience, an opportunity in self-reflexivity of your own situation in terms of your self-location of gender, sexuality, and the assumptions that you have about how the world works. I hope you enjoyed that in some way, and I hope you are as excited about this project as I am. I'll leave Malin's video below, which you should definitely watch, and I hope that you would like to converse with us uh, in the comments or on Twitter. I'll also leave our links to that down below. And the book that we will be reading for next month is The Giddy Death of the Gays and the Strange Demise of the Straits by Redfern John Barrett, which I will leave links to down below as well. So, let me know what you think.